Podcast City Network. Listener discretion is advised. <laughs> You're listening to ELS. Let's go! Uncut. No doubt. Put your drinks up! Okay. okay. Now we come to the payoff. Let's rock. Welcome to ELS Uncut, your weekend debauchery of madness. I'm Everett Lee, and I'm joined tonight by Mr. Deathmatch Russell Podcast, David C. Russell. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good tonight. How you doing, man? We, you know, we're coming to the wire here, man. Tomorrow night, we're excited for something really big that's happening in Kentucky. I know. At Kentucky. Kentucky Zone Wrestling presents uh, Double Danger, Double Danger, Double Danger Four of Battle Royale. Two rings. It's gonna be nuts. Chaotic. Two I know. rings. Do you believe that? I know. And that means tonight we have a guest right there, ladies and gentlemen, viewing the live stream right now. You can see his beautiful mug up on the page right here. I want to welcome to the program tonight none other than Kentucky Zone Wrestling's Chris Sterling. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys? I'm great. Yeah, pretty good. How you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Big man. night ahead of you tomorrow. Big night ahead of you. For sure. For sure. Yeah. But yeah. any time that I step into the ring is a big night, you know? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely is. Kentucky Zone Wrestling, they have a lot going on, and a lot of people – have tuned into Kentucky Zone Wrestling for a lot of the content and a lot of the wrestlers, a lot of the talent. It has been amazing. And we've had David and I on each of our podcasts, the Ever Lee Show and Death Match Wrestle Podcast. We have a lot of mm-hmm. talent from Kentucky Zone Wrestling, which has been great. And I couldn't say anything, you know, anything. Yeah, like- more than thank you guys. I know. We love it. It's just- <laughs> <laughs> we we well, appreciate you guys giving us like the platform to get our names yeah. out there to a new crowd and hopefully spread Kentucky's own wrestling around as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It looks like you already got a fan in the chat, uh, Chris. Devin says you suck, but he'll definitely be there to boo you tomorrow night. <laughs> you know? Um, oh, that's one of our that's one of our Twitter our one of our fans one of right, our there. Followers right there. Right there. Probably getting me confused with their mother, but but yeah. Oh, <laughs> let me play this. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> every time. Yep, yep. Every time. Every time. But yeah, have have you ever done a podcast before? Have you been on the podcast? Um, this is actually my first one. I've done oh. some video interviews, but not not podcasts. Ooh. David. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> All right. Wow. Well, well, bigger than David Letterman. <laughs> <laughs> better than David bigger. Letterman. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. What the fuck he's does? <laughs> or whatever his name is. Uh, Jimmy Fallon. And, uh, Jimmy Fallon. Know. Jimmy Fallon. David, David, am I going to ask you, is this going to be happening tonight with you, David? Is it going to be, uh... Nothing wrong with me! Nothing wrong with me! <laughs> is that how you're going to be tonight? <laughs> you know what? Yes, it's freaking Friday it's night. It's Friday. It's, just, it's right. It's Friday. It's Friday. So I got to rib you. I got to rib you in front of my guests just a you're little all, bit. Uh, you, yeah, you're going to get a rib later. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs> well, don't be don't be uh, harsh and sad if I happen to uh, you tonight there. So, 
I want to yes, jump sir. in and I want to ask some Go questions ahead. for our guest tonight. Or do you want to start that off, David? Yeah, uh, sure. Um, let me uh, look at my little list here of things. Uh, Chris, where did you grow up? So I grew up in a small town called Stanford, Kentucky. Um, it's a place filled with salt of the earth people, unlike me. Um, but I hail from Louisville, Kentucky, which is much more well known. Mm -hmm. Nice. And if, you, and if you ask me, I was actually born in North Dakota. <laughs> really? <laughs> ask me why I'm here? I don't know. <laughs> me, I was born here in Daytona Beach, and I yeah. I grew up here, moved away, and then I finally came back about eight, nine years ago. But that's that's cool. You you've pretty much lived in Kentucky your whole life, just about. Yeah. 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 That's um, cool. I actually have lived in Kentucky my whole life. It's been like it's like three cities, but for the majority of it, it's been the same town. Uh, and I've I've never been outside of the country. I've only been to like I think nine different states. Hopefully, nice. that'll change soon with wrestling. But yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely, definitely. At what age did you get into wrestling? You know, it's funny because like I don't really remember life without wrestling. Right. One of my earliest memories is. Um, the Doctor of Thugonomics, John Cena on SmackDown. Oh, I remember yeah. Him coming out with his, yeah. <laughs> I remember him coming out with his yellow pants and stuff before he started wearing the jorts. Oh yeah, it's like one of my earliest memories. And uh, my mom has videos of me when I was like a toddler, like a newborn almost, uh, yeah. watching WCW Monday Nitro. So right. wrestling's always been a thing. Um, I don't know when I decided I was going to become a wrestler, but, like, the the earliest I could pinpoint it was I went to a uh, SmackDown Live house show uh -huh. back in about 2011. Right. And um, Cody Rhodes was doing the the mask gimmick. He had the clear mask on. Yeah. And uh, he was going around in the crowd with security guards, and he was handing out the paper bags and telling people they were ugly and they needed to cover up their face. Mm. Oh, yeah. I remember that. And he was just getting, he was getting such a reaction from the crowd. And I was just like, you know, that's, that's incredible. Like I, I would love to be able to elicit that kind of reaction from someone. Right. Um, and then, so I was in middle school when that happened. And then, you know, throughout high school, I had this plan, you know, I was going to go to college and I was going to, I was going to be a teacher and uh, coach basketball, which was, like, honestly my first love. Um, and then I decided, I was like, you know, I really don't want to go to school, and I really don't want to work a nine-to-five job. Right. And I realized, like, you know, what, what do I really love? I love wrestling. Right. I was like, so, you know, that's what I'm going to do. It's your passion. Your passion. Yeah. You strive for it, and, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, I mean, yeah, you, your your passion's wrestling, and you went for your dream. You definitely went for your dream. You definitely did. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't imagine doing anything else now. Like, there would be such a void if I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely. Winton, um, when did you go and get get trained to be to become a wrestler? So I started training in 2017, um, mid-2017. I went up to Ohio Valley Wrestling, mm -hmm. uh, which you guys probably know. Yes. Um, you know, it's like, it's called the Harvard of Pro Wrestling. It's a great place to learn. Um, I was actually fortunate enough to be part of the last class that uh, Matt Capitelli trained uh, before he passed away, sadly, from cancer. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of him or not. Uh, oh, he was he won tough enough with John Morrison. That's right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, yes. He's, he's on Monday Night Raw and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was in OVW. He was like the heavyweight champion down there, and he was about to get called up. Right. Uh, when he had a match at OVW, um, and he got knocked out in the match, and you know they always do concussion checks when stuff like that happens. Um, 
and when they did the, they checked for the concussion, they found a tumor, and so he had to retire because he had a brain tumor. Uh, he beat it, but sadly it came back in 2017, and uh, he passed away last year to it, um, which is incredibly sad because he was he was a great wrestler, but he was an even greater person. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I was very blessed to uh, be able to learn from him not only in wrestling but just in life. Mm -hmm. He was a great guy, um, and I also got to learn from Rip Rogers. He's yes. a world traveled wrestler, and everyone knows him. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Rip Rogers. He's, a, he's quite Rip. the character. He's quite the character. I bet. I've heard that name. I've heard that name. Yeah, oh, I yeah. believe. He's, I believe Robin's. I think Robin on Wrestle Podcast. I think he's had him on before, David. I'll have to go back and look at the archives. I think he archives. has. Right. Yeah, I'll have to go back through the wow. archives. I, because I, I remember seeing something. I may have mistaken him for someone else, but I remember remember that he might have had him on. I'll have to go back and look, though. Definitely. Mm -hmm. He's a uh, he's quite the character. He's he's very uh, outspoken. I'll say. Yeah. And if you're if you're going to be playing a podcast with him on it, make sure your kids know. <laughs> 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 you got a question, David? Yeah, I would say, uh, tell me about working in KZW. Let's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, tell us KZW, about KZW. I, I, I went to KZW for the first time in um, June. I think it was June 25th, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. I'm really bad with dates, but uh -huh. uh, I believe that was my first show. It was in Williamsburg, Kentucky. Right. Um, yeah. I faced this gentleman named uh, Dark Suede, and I beat him handily. Um, and I've been there ever since. I haven't missed a show. Nice. It's a it's a good it's a good place. Uh, I'll be it's sure. very, it's kind of like a I don't know what the term is like a a screenshot in time. Like I, when I when I look at it, I kind of like it kind of harkens back to the eighties. Got a very old school mentality and feel. Right. right. That's what you want, wrestling. You know, that's what we like. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, like, you know, yeah. not 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 in the glitz of glamour, you know, and just yeah. all the right ever. It's like we know. It's, you see it now. It's like everything. You know. Yeah. You don't need to. You don't have to go hybrid, and you know, it just you could shape, be your style. You know, do your own style, and mm -hmm. just be creative. Every time, you know, come out of the ring and a mask sometimes, big deal, you know. But that's part of the game, you know. Well, sure. well, also depends on the character you're mm -hmm. that you are and who you are. And one thing I want to ask you, Chris, working in KCW, Kentucky Zone Wrestling, how is it working with Mr. McGuire? I call him JJ McGuire. I know you all call him Mr. McGuire. How's that? Well, I will say that I definitely do not call him Mr. McGuire because I have been routinely screwed by that man and his wow. management team. Ooh. Oh, you wow. see, when I debuted in KZW, I was undefeated for seven, eight months probably. Mm -hmm. And I did not get the opportunities that I deserved. I'll, I'll say that straight out. And I'm not, I'm not being cocky. I'm not being, uh, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just a realist, and I deserve better than what JJ gives me. JJ does not give me title shots. JJ does not get me into matches with big names. JJ doesn't appreciate what I do for him, you know? Right. And it's a shame, really, because. JJ knows talent when he sees it. You know, he traveled mm -hmm. around with Jimmy Hart and with Hulk Hogan. And trust me, I know this because he won't let you not hear about it because he's constantly talking about it. Right. Um, right. He knows that I'm the best wrestler in KZW, and he knows that I should be getting opportunities that I'm not. Right. So there's, there's kind of a, a rift between me and K, uh, KZW's management team, especially J.J. McGuire. Mm -hmm. So you feel, do you feel that 
he's holding you back as as a talent there? You feel like he's just overlooking you? You can't really overlook me, mm-hmm. um, but he's definitely underappreciating me. He's he's just trying to more or less bury me, I suppose, because I just don't think he he likes me. He doesn't like. How and and I admit that I am how how brash I am and how over the top I am about things sometimes. Um, but that doesn't give him the right to deny me the opportunities that I've earned. Right, right, right. You shouldn't be denied opportunities. You shouldn't. Right. Yeah, you shouldn't be no. denied opportunities that you deserve. Yeah, definitely. Now well, I think we'll have, I think we're gonna have to talk to Mr. Mr. JJ. <laughs> yeah, someone's gonna have to get into his head that that I uh, I need to be treated better. Maybe or Mr. Who knows, uh, I, I might be gone if I'm not treated better, you know. And then hmm. that wouldn't be good for KZW business. The legacy. Wise. That's the not legacy. Good for business. Yes. Yeah. Then the legacy moves on. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Chris Stewart. Yeah, yeah. Because opportunity knocks every time, you know, and everywhere else, you know that. Mm-hmm. It like does. You you some good, 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 good stuff coming up pretty soon, so you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, especially tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is double down, and that's mm-hmm. a double ring. I'm excited about this. This this throws me. This is like yeah. a throwback to the old war games. From WCW, which I love. You have a we double ring stuff. battle over the top battle royal. Now, you're, you're going to be in the battle royal tomorrow night, right, Chris? Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Yes. 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 Can you can you uh, elaborate more and tell us about the event Double Down tomorrow night? KCW presents so, Double Down. Or double Danger, Danger Four tomorrow night Sorry. is going du- to be. You're fine. Uh, <laughs> double Danger Four. It's the fourth annual, but I think it's like the fifth or sixth one that they've done. Uh-huh. It's two rings, side by side, over the top, battle royal. Um, the winner gets a shot at the heavyweight championship. Yes. Mm. So it's going to be the entire KZW roster. Yeah. Minus whoever is the heavyweight champion after Matty B and Tomahawk go at it. Right. Um, as well as a lot of free agents and people from other promotions that are coming in and uh, trying their hand at glory in KZW, I suppose. Um, it's kind of a wasted trip for them because I'm most likely going to win it unless, you know, I yeah. die. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't get caught in the middle of the rings, you know? Just don't get caught in the gap yeah. there. Yeah, just don't get yourself... <laughs> that's, that's always dangerous. Yeah. You ever yeah. see that? Like, I'm like, oh, man, these guys are going to die because that little gap in the middle of the, you know? Yeah. yeah they're, the not, little... they're not going to die, uh, David. No, like, I'm kidding. No, you don't, no it's always they're dangerous. They're not going to so, die, you know? not unless they get they get thrown in there and they, they get hung up and... Yeah. And people yeah. just start just squishing them. They, they're not gonna. They're not gonna die, Dave. <laughs> you don't know how to handle yourself. You could get. You could. You could die in a lot of ways in a wrestling ring. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. So you, know, you might. You might just yeah. be right on that. Someone. Someone might die in between the rings. Mm. So. Well, especially especially when you have double rings like that, and all, and a lot of talent coming in for KCW tomorrow night. Like you said, free agents coming in. You you also have the roster coming in there, and it's just you guys, and plus big big guys, big guys. You know, like yeah, it's like that's like what you have to watch out for. You know, yeah. the big dominant. You know what I mean? Yeah, the big guy. Uh, there, there are quite a few big guys in KZW, so I'm mm-hmm. I'm uh I have to be wary of that. Of course, you know I'm. I might I might be cocky, but I'm not stupid. You know, I don't think totally, my cocky totally to my head. So I need I I I know who I need to to watch out for in that battle royal. Right. How tall you are guys Chris? are the main guys that I need to watch out for. Yeah. May I ask you how tall you are, Chris? I am six foot. 
Wow. I'm five ten. I'm I'm the shortest guy here, man. I'm like five six though, but um, yeah. you can ask my wife. I make up I make up in other other areas. But anyway <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now I want to I want to ask you, Chris. Okay, Matty B is going after another title shot tonight against, uh, or not tonight, tomorrow night against the champion Tomahawk. Who's your Who's your pick to win on that one right there? You know what? I will say from personal experience that Tomahawk is a good wrestler. Uh-huh. He's not great. He's not mm-hmm. bad. He's good. And you don't want to be just good. It's like in basketball. Right. If you're just good, you're not going to win the NBA Finals. He's, he's a veteran. But you're also not going to get those top draft picks. You know, there's like, like he's like bottom, he's like, he's like, he's met his glass ceiling. You know what I'm saying? Yes. He's, He's 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 where he is, and he can't get any higher. Now, Matty B, on the other hand, I've not had the opportunity to wrestle him. Mm. But, you know, wrestlers know when they see. And, I, you know, he's a very talented guy. He's very, he's very good. He's been doing this for a number of years, much longer than I have. Right. Um, and as long as Tomahawk doesn't pardon my language... Cheat. <laughs> um, I think Maddie B's gonna pull it out. Okay. Uh, I I don't I don't see it going any other way. Um, because like I said a few weeks ago, I actually had a match with Tomahawk. Right. Um, and I had him beat, and he had to have um, Pitbull Ebenezer come out and uh, distract me so that he could win. That's a, that's a story. Yeah. Don't get me started on that one. <laughs> have you uh, have you ever faced have you faced um, Jeremy Rach? I've not. I've not. Ooh. I um, I, I had a tag match with him one time. Nice. Um, I, uh, we won, so nothing but respect for him. Mm. How uh, about the How about the Chris Rose? Me and the Chris Rose have locked up multiple times. Um, right. And he's never beat me. I will uh-huh. say that. But he is he is a very fierce competitor. He's very smart. He's a he's a smaller guy, but what he lacks in size and strength he makes up for in ring acumen and intelligence. Uh he's a he's a very good competitor. Yeah. Chris Chris is a really, really good good competitor. And he's he's held on to the United States championship. For God, man, for it, oh, he's passed a hundred. Yeah, for quite a while, he's he's way past over a hundred days already. For sure, and mm. no one's been able to take that from him. No one's been able to take that for from him. No one's even come close to taking it from him. Yeah, uh, he's defending it against Kenny Cannon. Yeah, uh, tomorrow night, which. Will be his his uh, biggest challenge yet. Mm-hmm. Kenny Cannon is actually the only guy in KZW who has been able to pin me and beat me clean. Right. So he's he's a hell of a wrestler, mm-hmm. and Chris Rose is going to have his hands full. But I, I think I think Chris Rose is going to pull it out again. What about uh? What about Billy? Billy Brewster, horsepower Billy Brewster. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Brewster. Oh, that guy. I forget about that fella sometimes. <laughs> yeah, he's a... Oh, he gets, he gets my blood boiling. Yeah. You know, he walks around and he thinks that he's this, this great guy all because he was in the military, but... Uh, right. As much as I respect our troops, I don't respect... The people who think that they're all that just because of that. I'll will t- tell Billy that uh, he's not 
he's not up to par with a lot of the guys in KZW, and if he keeps on running his mouth the way he has to me uh-huh. on Facebook, he might. I seen that. I've seen that. I've seen that. <laughs> yeah. I've seen a bit. Of that. I caught a couple of that. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've seen. I've seen. I believe I've seen one. One of the. Uh, he might. Yeah. He might run into some trouble if he keeps on talking. Right. Well, apparently. In the chat, the chat's pretty fired up here tonight, Chris. I want to right, mention yeah. that uh, Devin, he would basically like. He mentioned that you threw his, you threw your wrist tape at him after you lost a world title title match, and then he said <laughs> he'd like to see trash trash can Graham hit you with a splash in the rumble. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh boy! You got some animosity there, man. You definitely do. You definitely do. You know what? What do you What do you say we open up the phone lines and get some calls in? How about that? This guy needs, right now, Devin, uh, call in. Would you Would you like that? Right sure. there, ladies and gentlemen. Once you call Let's in, we we'll do a quick Q and A. You guys, can, we could do a quick Q and A with Chris Sterling. Why don't you call the show there at 386-206-1595. Give ELS Uncut a call. And if you have a question for Chris Sterling, Kentucky's own wrestling, KCW Chris Sterling, go ahead, give us a call. We'd like to hear your thoughts. And Come on, Devin, questions. call in. Let's have Devin call in. Call in, Devin. If he right? has the balls. If he has the balls. Ooh. <laughs> Uh oh, uh oh. But we'll leave the phone lines open. You want to ask Chris Sterling a question or anything? Give him a yeah. call right there. The number's on the screen right there. Three eight six two zero six one five nine five. We'd love to hear from you. And one last question I want to ask you is tomorrow. Tomorrow night, double danger. Double double ring, a lot of talent coming in for that title shot. Do you have anything you want to say to the KCW locker room and the other talent, the free agents, all coming in tomorrow night? Do you have anything you want to say to the locker room? To the locker room as a whole, everyone at KCW and Everybody in Kentucky knows what classic Chris Sterling brings to the table. So if they, they want to get in there and they want to share the ring with me, that's fine. But they know they're not going to win. They know that they're in over their heads anytime they step in the ring with me. You know, but hopefully they look at it as a learning experience and they, they learn from me. They, they, they pick something up, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, what I really want to, to say... I have I have quite a few things to say to Pitbull Ebenezer. Pitbull Ebenezer kind of interjected himself into my career, right? For no reason. Um, a few months ago we had a match, and I beat him one, two, three in the middle of the ring. Um, and I got a KZW Heavyweight Championship match against Tomahawk. Something that I had fought for, something that I earned, something that I put blood, sweat, and tears into. And he came out of nowhere because he was he was bitter and upset and embarrassed that I beat him. He he came out there and distracted me right after I hit Tom Hawk with my finisher and had him pinned one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He came out there, got my attention, had the referee distracted just long enough for Tom Hawk to come in behind and roll me up for the three count. So Pitbull is not a very well-liked person in the in the uh, Sterling household, I'll say that. <laughs> he's kind of <laughs> Sterling he's, he's kind of he's kind of stepped out of his league, you know. He's a he's a relatively new wrestler, and so am I. Right. But he's he's right. not 
he's not at the level that I'm at. He's not as good as I am. He's not as smart as I am. You know, he's a he's a great athlete. Mm-hmm. He's shredded to the gills. Um, but he he's, he doesn't have the smarts that I have. He doesn't have the passion that I have. You know, people can say whatever they want about me. They can say that I'm cocky. They can say that I'm brash. They can say that I've got a bad attitude. They can say I whine too much. But, you know, none of that really matters when I step into the ring because I put in more work than anyone on the KZW roster. Right. And, honestly, more than anyone in the wrestling business. You know, I, I work hard, and I, I dedicate every hour of every day to wrestling. Like he's he's kind of, he's kind of went and and thrown away all the work that I've put in over the last year and uh, four months now, almost five um, of my wrestling career. You know, yeah. I finally got the heavyweight championship match that that I was looking for, and and I had it won, and he just took it away from me. So he's he's going he's going to learn a lesson in keeping his snout. Mm-hmm. Out of other people's business, yeah. Um, but honestly, this isn't the last time that I'm going to see him because on April 14th in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, uh, I'm going to be wrestling Pitbull again in the main event for Iron Pro Wrestling. Uh, so it's gonna it's gonna be another good opportunity for Pitbull to step into the ring with a actual wrestler. That knows what he's doing, um, and hopefully learn something. You know, learn a little bit of respect, maybe. You know, but we'll see. You know, mm-hmm. you can't right. teach an old dog new tricks, can you? Chris, Chris, I want to ask you. I want to ask you. This is this is off the topic here. Well, this is into the topic, but uh, this is not even on the notes. This is just a general one that I that I always ask people in, in wrestling. Um, what what is your current music? When you come out to the ring, so uh, what's, the, what's the language rules on this podcaster? It's un, it's no uncut. Podcast. It's, it's uncut. Okay, uncut. So, That's why we got the yeah, parental advisory at the beginning of the gotcha. episode. This is uncut, gotcha. unfiltered. Gotcha. Um, so my theme song is uh, "Fucking in the Bushes" by Oasis. <laughs> it's an it's an instrumental oh. track. It takes out wow. the vocals. Yeah, it takes I out the know. vocals because KZW is like. Mm-hmm. All family friendly and whatnot. Yeah. So. Yeah. Some sometimes sometimes I mean you know you 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 have to be you know f- f- family friendly and you know within the guidelines and stuff and everything. But um, yeah, I I <laughs> it's a good it's a good. <laughs> <laughs> that they don't play the lyrics. Yeah, I mean, I mean, sh- I'm sure the fans would be like, "What?" Oh the? man, I haven't heard that <laughs> song in a long time, man. Wow, I because to, yeah, I back when I was in high school, Oasis was getting kind of big there, man. Because like around '94, yeah. I remember the one album they had. They had, had it was like more of a rock kind of alternative what, thing. What, Champagne Supernova? No, no, it was the one before that, was that, that one. That was the second album. Yeah, that was oh, the second was album. Yeah, it, the the one song, Jim, I haven't, I, I'm more familiar Forever. with their second album. It has Wonderwall and stuff like yeah. that. But like the one before that one in 94. You're probably thinking of Live Forever. Yes, I love that yeah. album. It had some really good, yeah. because the time that, and everything. Yeah, but, that album's called Definitely Maybe, and it's, uh, yes. it's definitely one of my, my top ten. It's a yeah. great it's album. It's definitely Maybe. One of my favorite <laughs> yeah. Oasis songs, actually both, two of my favorite Oasis songs, is is Wonderwall and Don't Look Back in Anger because of uh, yeah. because Noel's brother sings on that one, and the lyrics to that song is just great. It's yeah, just great. well... Well, Liam is the the regular lead singer, so Noel yeah. is the one who sings "Don't Look Back in Anger." Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a that's a great <laughs> song. You know, I'm a I'm a huge rock and roll fan. Uh, cool. The yeah. Rolling Stones are my favorite band. Uh huh. And then I would definitely say Oasis is second. I love Oasis. Uh, he, those first two albums are great. Uh, are 
Kirk let me ask. Let me ask you this, Chris. <laughs> let me ask you this, Chris. What's your local radio station there that you listen to? I want to. I want to check it out. <laughs> like you we know, have not. I don't listen to the radio much. Really? Uh, yeah. But uh, no. The one that I did listen to back in the day was 103.3. Uh, yeah. Gosh, I forget what it's called. It's just it's been so long, you know. I've got Spotify now. Yeah. Uh, right. All that millennial technological advance. You're, 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 yeah. <laughs> you don't want to have that on the radio, okay, in the car when you're going. I I personally I personally have Sirius XM. I listen yeah. to that. I listen to Sirius XM all the time when I when I'm going to work in the morning, even on the way home. And the, this morning I was listening to uh, Faction Radio. I was listening to the uh, the Sam Roberts and Jim Norton show, Jim and Sam yeah. sh show. They had uh, J Jamie Jets uh, J uh, Jetson on from the lead singer Hate Breed. He was on there, and they were talking about stuff. They were talking about. D. Snyder just put a tweet out, I believe it was yesterday, and he bashed the Hard Rock Cafe. <laughs> He's like, he puts on the tweet, he says, if I want to go to the Hard Rock Cafe, if I want to hear the uh, latest Andriana uh, Grande single, I'll just go to the Hard Rock Cafe. <laughs> we're going to get notes on our Twitch right now as we speak also. Everett? What's that? Uh, uh Devin's actually talking again. Oh, okay. Saying. All right. Your number one fan, Chris, uh, Devin, yeah. says that you need to put in more work in that tanning bed. And he said, tell him I'll be the one in the crowd with the sunglasses on when he comes out tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> well, you know what that means, Chris? Chris that means... Go fuck yourself. Chris, Chris do this. Do this tomorrow. <laughs> Oops. Oh, sorry. Step on him. Step on him. I dare you to. I you know dare what? You. Yeah. The, 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 the fact of the matter, I, I don't know what Devin looks like, but I yeah. can guarantee he doesn't look half as good as me because, you know, wrestling fans are a very particular type of people. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> At least in Kentucky. <laughs> yeah. Wow. There, there are great ones, too. Don't get me wrong, but. Right. I know how the KZW faithful are. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, they definitely are, man. They definitely are. Yeah. Like, if you ever watch my entrance, I'm sitting there feeling myself, like, feeling my way around uh, like a blind mice, you know? Like, I bring a cane out so that I don't have to look at anyone while I make my way into the ring. <laughs> <laughs> You're not afraid of the dark, are you? <laughs> Well, you know what? You know what? If uh, you need your, if you need help to the ring and back, they can always do this for you, man. You know. <laughs> Seven nine, Adam. Yeah. This is Central BCC. Multiple SWAT units responding. Code three to CP at one twenty seventh and Adelaide. Barricade situation. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've, oh, there you I've go. had to have I've had to have some police escorts from the building a yeah. few times. I get the hillbillies worked up so badly. Oh, no. You did not just say that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Devin Damn. was one of them. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I'm sure oh, he was stomping at the bit. You know what? He might be He might be one of the ones that sent me a death threat. Oh, you've gotten I've death gotten threats. i a couple of those. No way. Oh, man. No way. Tell me yeah. about that. Yeah, what's that all yeah, about? Okay. Yeah, yeah, So, back in... Um, Back in January, uh -huh. early January, I was embroiled in a a vicious feud with my with a family member actually, Kenny Cannon. He's my he's my cousin. Yeah, we grew up together. Um, we we were a tag team in KZW for a while. Um, but Kenny was kind of like dropping below to other people's level and he wasn't up on mine and he, he he lost us a very important match um so i kind of had to cut those familial ties and go out on my own really which he didn't appreciate and the fans didn't appreciate uh-huh um and as a gesture of goodwill because he is my family member and you know we do have that past and that history i gave him quite a few matches with me right um and right. I beat him every single time. Singles matches, tag matches, 
Um, it always ended with me pinning him one, two, three. Um, but in December at KZW's uh, annual Hardcore Christmas show, Kenny defeated me in a hardcore match, um, which I don't think is actual wrestling. Right. Because it does not allow for the technical uh, ability of the superstars to shine through. Mm. You know, no one pays to train um, with superstars on how to get hit in the head with a chair. Um, they get trained on how to wrestle. So all that Kenny can improve that night was that he was a better um, third-degree assaulter than me, I suppose. Um, but he beat me, and that kind of did not set well with me. So I routinely asked for a rematch because, you know, I, I feel like that was owed to me. Right. Um, because I had beaten him so many times before, you know? Uh-huh. And he wouldn't give it to me, and that was another thing that J.J. McGuire wouldn't give to me. Right. So I kind of had to take matters into my own hands. Uh, Kenny actually had a match for the United States title with Chris Rose, um, and he decided uh, that he wasn't going to give me that match earlier that night. And so I brought his girlfriend out, uh, I had her hands tied behind her back, and I threatened to give her the concerto. Wow! Um, which got okay. me my match, by the way. So it was it was an effective strategy. Uh -huh. But uh, the fan the fans were not they did not approve of what I did. Right. Which like right. I don't give a shit. <laughs> but they were pretty upset. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as soon as I got back to my locker room. Um, and I, I got on my phone after I got out of my gear. Um, oh, Devin has a I question. Was, I was receiving Sorry. death threat after death threat. Uh -huh. uh, I had this one guy say, you better not come out of the gym. Uh, I've got my gun ready. <laughs> I had this one guy, wow. he was like, I'm going to follow you home. I mean, they were just, Jeez. I mean, it was just a lot of talk. Got my you know, sawed-off shotgun, I'm ready to go. You know? Damn. <laughs> yeah. Damn. De Devin, like David is saying, David, David said, all joking aside, though, seeing the KZW roster as someone who would like to get into the business one day, you, Chris, would be the one he'd like to step in the ring with. Well, get, tell, talk to him when you get to the show. Talk to him. Well, yeah, talk you know, to him. It's, Come see him at the show. You know, talk what, what, well, if, uh, what David, I have to say to anyone who wants to step into the wrestling business is... Do it, but if you're gonna do it, you have to put your 100. Like you have to put your all into it, because right. there are a lot of people out there who wrestle. Um, they're what you call trash baggers, I suppose. Yeah. You know, they 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 wrestle once a month, and they and they're not good, and their 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 gear sucks, and they they have bad matches every time out, and they just right. they just don't do anything to better the sport. And like, I'm not being disrespectful, you know. Uh -huh. Like, it's just like. I respect wrestling because it's what I love. And there's so many people out there that like go out there and just make a butchery of it just because they they can. And it, and you know, back in the day they wouldn't have been allowed to. No. Which So if you're if you're gonna come in and wrestle, which like wrestling's for everybody in my opinion, like uh -huh. I'm not one of those guys like, hey, you can't be fat because that's like not a thing. Like I'm I'm like I'm not in the most uh I'm not the most shredded guy myself, mm -hmm. uh, but you know you do have to be in a certain kind of shape. You do have to be in good shape, and yeah. I have, I'm in great cardiovascular shape. So, you know you got you got to have that conditioning down, and you have to you have to respect the sport. And you know you, but you know you can be you can be black, white, Japanese, uh, Hispanic. You can be you can be a guy. You can be a girl. You can be whatever. You know, like wrestling's for everyone. It's just you just got when you come in you've got to respect the sport you've got to respect the art you've got to respect the the uh, the in intricacies of it you've got to you've got to take care of the business because you know we're the guys that are that are uh, keeping it afloat yeah. along with the fans and you know no one respects the business more than the fans themselves uh, right because they're, they're they're the ones that keep it in uh, in business mm -hmm. so. Just as if you're gonna do it, give it your all, because that's what wrestling deserves, and that's what the fans deserve. Exactly. So, that's that's, so that's what I always say to people. 
Yeah. So Devin, yeah. so Devin, if you want to ask some questions, you know, ask him at the show, right? Yeah. Ask you tomorrow night. That is yeah. that is yeah. Chris. Don't knock your sunglasses off. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's seriously. But yeah, that's, I, I know. That's good though. I'm glad that's, yeah. the fans are listening. They were, mm-hmm. you know, just give them a little insight, maybe. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm always into like, you know, like anybody who wants to start wrestling, like if it's your passion, you know, like a year and a half ago, I was literally them, you know, I, I was like just a guy that wanted to do it, or, uh, and before that, I was just a guy that loved wrestling, you know. Right. So it's like, if you've got a dream, face it, and that, and like that's true for anything. Like I don't, I I hate to see someone give up on their dream. Yeah, that's the worst thing. Yeah. Uh, I know. Uh, yeah. Like it's, it's so sad to see. It is. It is. But if you're gonna do it, you got to put 100 percent into it, and like it's it's hard. It's not easy. You know, you've got to you've got to train, and you don't don't just go train with anyone. Go train with the best. You know, like go. Go train with someone that has been where you want to be. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Go train with the best. Uh, go yeah. go train with someone that stay, performs at a level local. that you stay like. Stay local. Doing. Stay local, and you know, because there's mm-hmm. a lot of good, good local yeah dojos yeah, there, and, and there training so many facilities. So yeah, there are so many yeah. guys like almost every promotion mm-hmm. trains people. You know, yeah. And there are so many guys that are at these local promotions that have been wrestling for. 20, 25, 30 years. They even own their own wrestling. And they're, like yeah, they own and, they're, and, they're, and they're phenomenal wrestlers. And, you know, just because they never made it to, like, the top doesn't mean that they weren't good enough to make it there. So, you know, like, just keep an eye out and look out for those guys that are good and are great and that can teach you something, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so yeah, it's like, like, you know, and if you have to, go out of state and one place yeah. I want to... Re- I, one state I would highly recommend, you know, New Jersey is the Monster Factory, is one of the top yeah. companies. And now, he's, now, uh, Chris, have you seen that? Now they've like turned it also the the Ring of Honor dojo. Now it's really yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, I you know, and another thing, um, you never stop training. Like, no. Once no. once you get done, <laughs> once you learn how to bump and you learn how to have your matches and everything, like. Um, you need to you need to keep on training. You need to go to all the seminars that you can, you know. And like, obviously, if you if you're like, say you're a wrestler and you like wrestling, um, you know, like an old school style, like you you don't have to go to like the big lucha seminar in town. Like, just mm-hmm. be smart with how you spend your money and go to the things that are going to be- benefit you and help you be the wrestler that you want to be. Let me let me um, ask you this, Chris: right. You got any seminars coming up that you're going to check out? The yeah, um, there is an Arn Anderson one coming up that I'm definitely going to go to. I forget what the date is exactly, but I'm definitely going to it. Double um, A, the enforcer, Arn Anderson. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, one Great. of my absolute favorites. Yeah, my mine too, mine too. Yeah, man. I'm I'm getting I'm getting a pair of trunks made uh, here soon. Uh, oh, I'm gonna cool. I'm gonna get a pair made uh, in tribute to him. I'm gonna get red on the back and then white on the front with red initials. Nice. Which that's, nice. that's what I wear now, anyway. Is like the you know the old school high rise trunks, Ric mm-hmm. Flair style. So yeah, gonna, that's I'm gonna that's awesome. Made in memory of the Forcer's career. Like, yeah, like, yeah. That that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Right now, we're going to take a two minute break to give a shout out. To the sponsors. supporters and sponsors of Podcast City Network. You can find these and more over on podcastcity.net. And when we come back, we're going to discuss more with Kentucky's own wrestling's Chris Sterling. So, fans, we'll be right back. The following support and sponsor podcast city network city limits tap room sports bar in the land florida has brew on tap serve food the grilled cheese is excellent for upcoming events check out city limits tap room on facebook.com slash city limits tap room atlantic sounds has thousands of new and used vinyl records and cds if they don't have it they can order it for you same location since 1982 
for more updates on what's new check out Atlantic Sounds on Facebook.com slash Atlantic Sounds Vinyl. Sports Sanity Customs have worked with organizations from custom embroidering polo shirts to jerseys for your kids baseball team, they do it all. On with state of the art equipment and an in-house design team, they are equipped to take on your next project. Visit their website to learn more, sportsanitycustoms.com. Visit Sports Sanity Customs on Facebook.com slash Sports Sanity Customs. Three Count Design offers a wide range of graphic design products, video, photography and other forms of media. Everything from t-shirt designs to websites. Visit Facebook.com slash Three Count Design for more. Demo Blast Studios, an explosion of imagination. Original artwork, podcasts, video, apparel and more. Visit DemoBlastStudios.com. Visit Demoblast Studios on Facebook.com slash Demoblast Studios, the best family entertainment pro wrestling show in the state of Kentucky. Kentucky Zone Wrestling brings quality family event wrestling to a town near you. Kentucky Zone Wrestling offers a ladies division in wrestling and a training school. Kentucky Zone Wrestling is the current longest running southern promotion. Visit Facebook.com slash Somerset Kentucky Zone Wrestling. All supporters and sponsors are brought to you by Podcast City Network. You're listening to ELS Unkind. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for ELS Uncut. We've been talking and discussing and chatting with Kentucky Zone Wrestling's Chris Sterling. And one thing, one thing, uh, I want to talk about we were talking about music earlier and one thing I want to want to mention is that you uh you ever listen to Motley Crue you you fan of Motley Crue Chris I I was a massive uh fan of not only Motley Crue but hair metal as a whole in my younger days which I'm only 21 so it was like four years ago but um <laughs> I I am actually planning on watching the dirt tonight oh yeah when, yeah i'm very excited to look forward to that i love motley crew yeah yeah one thing one thing nikki six from motley crew i don't know if you've heard this and i don't know if uh david heard this too but nikki six has been making waves here lately with a lot of no. like a lot of musicians and stuff um apparently he he had a thing about like with Kiss. I guess Motley Crue don't care too much about Kiss. <laughs> they they don't. They don't really care too much about Kiss. And one thing that they really don't care too much about Kiss is because I guess Kiss has been did this one thing with their you know, Kiss is doing their last farewell tour. I don't know if you heard about that. And yeah. tickets have been outrageous, man. To go see Kiss on this farewell tour. Like six hundred dollars to go see damn Kiss, man. I don't even want to know what the hell the merchandise is going to be priced at. <laughs> God, I'd rather go to a Kentucky Zone Wrestling event, buy a twenty dollars shirt, twenty five dollars shirt, sit back, buy some concessions, watch some good wrestling, and that would be my night. I mean, a lot of people are really basically shelling out money to go see Kiss. But Nikki Six and Motley Crue don't really care too much about Kiss, because one of the things that Motley Crue did was they did this like roller coaster thing where Tommy Lee would be in the drums and he'd like go up around the ceiling upside down and stuff and everything. And the company that put that out there, I guess, rented it out because it was just sitting there. And mm -hmm. and a lot of people, I think this rap artist has just started using that and Nikki called him out on that and Nikki's been very vocal with a lot of people he came out just recently and said that he don't blame grunge for killing the hair metal scene he blames the hair metal for killing the hair metal <laughs> that's that's one thing I was looking at blabbermouth.net and he he basically spoke out about the rise of grunge in the early '90s because you know, like Nirvana. As soon as Nirvana came out in '91, boom, that was it. Hair bands, yeah. 
kind of faded, took a step back because every other the band. Bon album, Jovi. The Bon Jovi. You well, know. Bon Jovi really didn't get hurt because in '93 they came out with a really good, good album. I forget. I what wouldn't the, say Bon Jovi's even really hair metal. They're like no. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, I mean, if anything, they're a pop rock. You know, pop rock. Yeah. You know, Bon Jovi's always been pop rock. It's like there's there's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. There's. I also, I also, I also don't consider Poison to be hair metal mm-hmm. necessarily. Like it's more pop rock to me in a way. You know. What uh, uh? What? Let me ask you this, Chris. I do. What, okay. Oh, I was, so I was gonna say, what uh, what alternative do you listen to right now? Like, who's your group right now? Like, who you like, like Godsmack or uh, you know, like all these all other groups that are just like taking it by storm. Mo- you know, modern just, day. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's you know, that's a that's a hard question for me. I don't. I'm yeah. not listening to a ton of current music. Um, right. I've been I've been listening to a lot of uh, independent uh, mm. music and folk music lately. Um, uh huh. My friend, one of my one of my best friends, his name's Gage Horn. He makes his own music. He's a he's an indie artist. I listen to his stuff all the time. He's phenomenal. Oh, cool. I really think he could hit it big someday. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I'm really really into uh, David Duchovny's music right now. You guys know David Duchovny. Oh yeah, from the, the actor from the X Files. He does music now. Um, it's really good stuff. It's uh, folk rock. Um. I'm I, I'm really I, it's really pressing me to try to think of a modern group that I really listen to. Modern like like, like you know like, like Dave Matthews to a you know to a Pearl Jam to you know. You know I uh, I was a big fan of Three Days Grace. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, but they have it. They they changed their lead singer, and I'm not as big of a fan of the new material. Mm-hmm. Um, uh huh. I really liked Seether as well. Uh, they had a wrestling yeah, connection, Seether. so yeah, I was really into Seether. Um, Seether's got some good stuff. Yeah, Buck Cherry. I I love Buck Cherry. That's a good band too. I've seen Buck Cherry multiple times, uh, and they're great. Yeah, the the lead singer Josh Todd. He's like, I honestly I kind of look up to him in uh, in wrestling because he just got such a magnetic. Uh, presence about him he's such a great show showman like on the stage uh i think a lot of wrestlers could learn from that guy <laughs> yeah because he's like he's so magnetic and he just he moves so well and it's just he he pulls you in and like you're you're not he doesn't let you go until you wake up the next morning <laughs> right um I'm trying to think of others uh shine down had some good stuff i really like yeah. shine down uh yeah um Foo Fighters, like always. Everybody. Oh well, yeah, Foo Fighters. I, I consider them older, but yeah, I love Foo Fighters. Dave Grohl's a genius. Mm-hmm. Um, big fan of Alter Bridge. Oh, Alter Bridge, band. yeah. Everett. Alter Bridge is Alter Bridge. Everett is great, likes that man. band. Everett likes that band. <laughs> yeah, I do because I actually phenomenal. seen Creed. I seen Creed back in uh, back in '99, and not when I lived in Knoxville, Tennessee. I actually uh-huh. seen I seen them. And they put on one hell of a show, but Scott Stapp, he fell off the rails, man, as a front man. I I just yeah. basically had to say that he 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 basically fell off the rails with that. Yeah, uh, he for sure. he did. And the band wanted to make music, and Scott just the ego, the front man ego got in the way, and so therefore yeah. he Scott, also had a lot of drug problems and stuff as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. which is incredibly sad because mm-hmm. he's so talented. But I know he's clean now. Uh, yeah. And Creed did a reunion not too long ago. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, but it's it's funny. Me and my me and my best friend Jared, we uh, he loves Creed. Yeah. And I love Alter Br- Alter Bridge, and I'll always uh, <laughs> I'll always joke with him. I'm like, oh, Creed sucks, but. <laughs> Creed's awesome. I love you. Creed sucks, and I like. All- <laughs> I actually Creed, like. Really good. Uh, I like. And he'll always be like, "Alter Bridge sucks," and I'm like, "They're the same band, like different it's singers, all the same members." Yeah, yeah, different, different singers, singers. <laughs> different singers. I mean, speaking, of, you know, like, speaking of Creed, actually was a big, big insp- inspiration of Charlie Haas and his brother uh, Russ Haas. You know, Russ Haas, they would, he would actually come out to the ring to that one of the Creed songs. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like uh, awesome. Creed, 
Creed has like a, a big know. wrestling connection, actually. Yes. Just, uh, the uh, WWE Desire videos, you know. Yeah. My sacrifice. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, a lot of tribute videos. To, like when he died, that's that was playing on, you know, like those videos yeah. would be playing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they were. They were. And then Ultra Bridge did Edge's theme. Yeah, Metalingus. Yeah, yeah, Metalingus. They the, took the one part of the of... very best wrestling entrance theme songs of all time. Mm-hmm. For one of the best wrestlers of all time. Yeah. Yeah. I hate Man. that guy when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> I I'll I'll tell you, the, the um Miles Kennedy, he is great. Yeah. He, Miles what yeah. is it? Miles Kennedy in the conspirators with Slash yeah. that yeah. is he's, he's one of my absolute favorite uh, singers today. Uh, I like I obviously I like Alter Bridge. Yeah. Um, and I love his stuff with Slash. I actually got to see him live with Slash. It was phenomenal. They came out to Paradise City, and yeah. it was just like I was just sitting there like with my jaw on the floor. What's, what but was your I, last? I had, to leave. I had to leave about halfway through their set because NXT was actually running live shows at the at the uh, festival we were at. So I was like, I gotta go watch Finn Balor. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I saw it was in. Uh, it's you can look it up the video. It happened a few years ago. Speaking of NXT, Corey Taylor from Slipknot. They were out in California or someplace, and uh-huh. they were doing an outdoor event there. And Corey Taylor, this back when Baron Corbin was still in the NXT, he was having a match against Samoa Joe. And while he was having uh-huh. that match against Samoa Joe. Corey got to kind of interact with Cor- Baron Corbin, and, and Corbin pushed him, and then Corbin uh, Corey just smacked the crap out of him. When he turned around, Joe grabbed him and put him. Oh, to I sleep. remember that. Yeah. See that was that that YouTube clip that was that was popular. That, yeah, yeah, that was great. That yeah, was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I do vaguely remember that. Yeah. Um, Corey Taylor's the man too. Mm-hmm. You know, he Slipknot, is. Slipknot's awesome, and, oh, God, as well yeah. as Stone Sour. Yeah, uh, yeah. Speaking of your, speaking of uh, Slipknot, they're going through some legal stuff right now with their percussionists, not the drummer. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Um, yeah, which over, is sad because they've been going through a lot lately. You know, they uh, have. Joey Jordanson died, and and they released the phenomenal Gray Chapter, which was a probably the last metal album that I was really into. Yeah, um, I don't really listen to metal as much as I used to. But like I still listen to the stuff that I do like, mm-hmm. and that album. Yeah, like we did. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I kind of have a diverse diverse uh, of music. I I listen to just about anything though. But I'm like at a hard. I'm more of uh, hard rock metal. It's like yeah. today on the way home. I'm sitting there driving down the road. I'm sitting there listening to uh, Pantera Walk. And then mm. I flip it over to the Octane channel, and they're playing uh, this one hard rock band, metal band, that's from Australia, which is, like, doing phenomenal now. They're starting to blow up really big. It's uh, Parkway Drive. They got that uh, one song, uh, The yeah. Void. I love the guitar to that song, man. I mean, the guitar riffs. I, I, got, I got to see Parkway Drive live at that uh, the same festival that uh, Slash and Miles Kennedy were at. Ah, oh, no uh, way. <laughs> Good, huh? They were at the show. They were very loud. Yeah, <laughs> which is like what you want, you know. Yeah, they were they were really good. Yeah, Parkway Parkway Drive. They they've come out of Australia and they pretty much they're pretty much just a kick ass band. They their music just rocks. Their their first two albums they put out were really really good and it got people noticed though. But this last one they just released is basically just put them out there on the map because they're they're going they're going to be gearing up going on tour with Kill Switch Engage, which Ooh, is yeah, which is fan. A good yeah, they a got good band right there. Oh yeah, Kill Switch. They especially got their original singer back and yeah, Brian, yeah, which is like really crazy because they had Howard Jones for mm-hmm. what like fifteen years, probably well, maybe not that long, but. Quite a while. Quite a while, yeah. 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 How, speaking of Howard Jones, he he ended up uh he's fronting a new band. I believe it's called uh it's called uh Dying Light or Day by Light and they they put they released a single I heard and it sounds phenomenal. It's it's really great. It I definitely is. It, uh, because Kill Switch Engage is awesome. They're another band that I first heard through wrestling with uh 
mm-hmm. CM Punk's entrance theme, you know? That yeah. Was, yeah. That was, uh, they're really good. Our good, our good friend, um, Chris Rose comes out to a, uh, kill switch uh-huh. engage. Kill yeah. Switch um, yeah. Yeah. He, he definitely does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He definitely does come out to a, um, to a, it's, uh, um, the end of heartache. Yeah. Which is a great song. Yeah. That's a, that's a good one right there. What was the, I was going to say, what was the last concert you were at? Chris. Last concert I went to was hinder. Mm. Uh, which was actually a couple years ago. Oh, I've, uh, yeah. I've not stopped. Yeah, last I think my year, last, my free time yeah. was wrestling. So, mine uh, mine was Alice Cooper Alice in wrestling Cooper. at a wrestling event. Oh wow! <laughs> yes, <laughs> the best of both worlds, huh? Yeah. Wow. What nice. was your What was yours, Everett? Damn, I'd have to say mine was about eight years ago. When me and my wife, she was actually my girlfriend at the time. We were started date. We were dating at the time, and the last concert I went to was in St. Petersburg here in Florida. To uh, uh, I think it was like Power Metal Fest. They had like six or seven bands playing. Um, our me and Chris Carnage's good friend uh, Camden Cruz, who's the guitarist, and. Uh, creative mind behind seven kingdoms they played and that's when their third album they just put they just put out their third album they just got their new singer which was sabrina sabrina cruz well sabrina valentine at the time but now cruz because her and chris uh her and um camden ended up getting married a few a few years ago but they they just got her Really great show. I think the headlining band they they were on before the main band, which was a band out of uh, England, Germany called Blind Guardian, which just was power metal. Just it was great. It was definitely a great uh, concert. Devin has a question. He wants to know if uh, if you're a gamer. If so, PS4, Xbox, and what do you play? I am a uh, massive gamer, and I have been my whole life. Uh, and I'm a PlayStation guy through and through. Oh, but nice. I actually have a lot of systems. Um, I have the PS4, PS3, PS2, and PS1. Um, I also have my N64 uh, and an original Xbox. Nice. So, well, yeah. game wise, I obviously I play WWE games. Um. um I'm a big fan of like post-apocalyptic games, like you know Fallout. Oh yeah, um, Metro games. Those are great games mm-hmm. that I feel like not a lot of people have played. They're really good. Uh, but my favorite game series is Hitman. Oh yeah, uh, that's a that's a great game series. They just released a new game, um, and it's one of the best ones yet. Uh, it's a phenomenal series. I love those games. Nice. But I'm really into old. Games. I play I play a lot of my old wrestling games like. Back down here comes the pain gets played just about every day. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, just any, any time that I get a chance, I love to I love to play video games. You know. Yeah. I work a lot throughout the week, and then I'm wrestling on the weekends. But whenever I get my spare time, I'm really into into video games. Uh, I guess the big new game that I've been playing is Red Dead Redemption Two. I haven't played that yet. I played oh, I played the man. first one. I played the hell out of the first one. I, you know I got a I ended up getting 100% on the first game. I got 100%. And speaking of like old gaming and stuff, I happened to pick up an old one of these right here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that old school devices. I know. A PS, PSP and I happened to pick up on top of the PSP games I already own. Which uh, you know, Ch- GTA Chinatown Wars, Liberty cool City Stories, uh, Castlevania, Dracula X Chronicles. That's good. Um, Tekken Tag, which is phenomenal, and Need for Speed Underground Rivals. But I ended up picking up some more. Spider Man Three, Crash Bandicoot. Um, Clash, Crash of the Titans, which has been fun. Um, Crash I just is one of the best series of all time. 
feel a soccer tin. I have not played it yet. I was like, oh, whatever. It was just, it was clearanced. Uh, yeah. one, of, one of the ones <laughs> I can't wait to play yet, uh, Star Wars The Force Unleash. <laughs> have, you, yeah. have you ever played Star, like, have you ever played it on one of the other systems it was out on? Yeah, I had it for PS3. Fantastic. I loved it. Yeah. And then Fantastic. Batman, Lego, Batman. <laughs> I've not I've not played a lot of the Lego games, but uh, my yeah. cousin, one of my cousins, is a huge fan of the Lego games, and he he swears I, by all. So I will say I'm not a gamer as much as I used to be, Chris. Yeah. I've been actually. Um, I probably have it over here. Let me grab this one. You, you, let me let me see what you think about this one here. Let me go ahead and okay. grab this if uh, if you want to go ahead, David, and ahead. continue. Okay. Yeah, I was telling Chris that I'm not. Yeah, I know. I have the old school gaming systems, like the PS, the original, you know, yeah. and the ten, you know, and on, the Sega. PS One, I love. Yeah. Uh, I love a lot of games. I'm a big fan of the old Tomb Raider games over there, um, mm -hmm. and of course SmackDown One and Two. Those are great games. I have the original Sega in your house. I was lucky to find that in the garbage yeah. can. Yeah, it's like a, seriously, yeah, you know, for like free. A, I found yeah. it. That's awesome. Whole system. I know. Those are the best games, the ones that are free. I can't find it, but <laughs> I have. Uh, I heard you say Sega uh, in your house. David. <laughs> I uh, I have. Um, I I started playing it again because I downloaded a demo for it, but I want to go out and buy the game, and I want to do some live streaming here. I did a few weeks ago on here on the Twitch channel. Here I played. Uh, I fired up uh, DMC, Devil May Cry, the Defiant Edition. I love Devil May Cry, man. That's one of my favorites. That's a, a classic series. I uh, I played the very first one. Uh huh. Um, I've not I've not played any of the other ones, but the very first one was really good. Uh, but it was very hard for a young guy like me when I was playing it. Uh, so it it, yeah. it resulted in a few uh, broken controllers. <laughs> yeah, it can that, actually that very hard. Yeah. Yeah, it can actually be a, fun, a pain a in the story. ass. Yeah, it's like it's one of those games like it's not cheaply hard though, it's just hard. Like you've got to be good at the game, you know. Right. But it's not cheating you out of anything. But a a, a cool story about Devil May Cry was uh the original one was originally uh being made as Resident Evil 4, which is another yes. series I love. Um, yes. And Resident Evil, and like you know, and then they, uh, the creative guys, they were like, no, we can't. This isn't Resident Evil. Uh, so they 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 went and made the Resident Evil Four that is out today, and that's one of the best games of all time. Another one that I love. Uh, yeah. I've probably beat that game a hundred times since it came out. I love that game to death. <laughs> yeah. Gaming totally changed the world. You know, like uh, games were like they used to be. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean they're they're different than they even were like the last console generation, you know, like mm -hmm. you go back and play a PS3 game and then you play a PS4 game and it's like Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's it, so it's I, something. I was, yeah, I was sitting there uh Grand Theft Auto 4 on, you know, PS3 and 360. It was a fantastic game and I went back and played it recently and I'm just like it's still a great game. It's still very, very fun to play even to this day just because it's a great timeless game. But it's like, you know, like, wow. They, like, our minds were blown by this back in 2008 when it came out. And yeah. now it's like still impressive in ways, but not in the ways that you would think, you know. Like, not in the ways that it was back then. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, a, it's, kind of, it's kind of ever-evolving, which is... Uh, True for a lot of things, a lot of forms of entertainment, you know, music, uh, and wrestling. Like wrestling. <laughs> what are you listening to? Right? <laughs> what are you doing, Aaron? I I what believe our stream, for some reason, the stream is oh. behind a few uh, a few minutes. <clears throat> because yeah, I saw that. Because I looked up on the I looked up on the chat here, and uh -huh. on the chat here. He uh, Devin's always asked another question or a comment he made. He said he always wanted to come out the creeds. What if? But um, um, yeah, yeah. I believe the <clears throat> the chat and the well, actually the stream is probably behind maybe 
I'd say probably maybe a delay. like yeah, yeah a, a, it has a, ended up with a maybe ten minute delay. <laughs> I don't know how that it's happened, weird. but Techno, um, te- technology, whatever. Yeah, they'll fix that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but um, man, let's get into some more topics, shall we, Chris? Uh, what do you, yeah, what do you got? Wrap wrap it up yeah. and call it a night. He's well, got a big about, big night ahead of him. What yeah. about uh, wrestling outside of? Uh, KZW, you know, like yeah, yeah. What uh, I wanted to mention is that um, with like WrestleMania uh, coming up, and uh, actually WrestleMania is just a few weeks away. Yeah, or just a week away. It's actually it's two, it's two weeks, right? Like yeah, after two weeks. Yeah. yeah, two weeks away. It's at, yeah, it's April seventh. What? In my backyard. What do you? In my backyard. Yeah, right, right behind David's back. I mean, right in his backyard, which is just I know, great. Man. Just great. It's like a twenty-minute ride. Twenty but mile, next year, twenty-minute ride up the parkway. But next year, WrestleMania is going to be in my backyard. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which I'm and excited I'm to. Coming. I'm excited to. And now, I'm coming. What <laughs> matches and what feud are you looking forward to for this year's WrestleMania? Um. Well, for one, I'm very much looking forward to the women's triple threat in the main event. Uh-huh. Um, not only because, like, Becky Lynch and, like, her incredible tear that she's been on, you know? Yeah. And, like, I love Charlotte Flair because she's, like, a phenomenal wrestler. Right. And, like, Ronda Rousey, obviously, is a huge megastar. Um, it's just I, I'm, I'm very happy that the women are getting the main event, WrestleMania, you know, the biggest show in all of wrestling. Right. Um, it, it's definitely time. Um, and it's just it just shows how much work they put into it that uh, they're able to do that now because, you know, that would have never happened a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, so I think it's going to be an awesome moment, and I'm very happy that it's happening uh, because a lot of times, like, there's, like, sometimes women's wrestling gets a bad rap and I wish it didn't because like I was saying earlier, uh, wrestling's for everybody and uh, the women can do it just as good if not better than the men most of the time. Yeah, just so. remember sports, you know, just remember people just support indie, re- you know, women's wrestling. That's one of the top yeah. factors too, you know, yeah. also in wrestling. Yeah. Support yeah. women's uh, wrestling. Yeah, def- I'm also definitely. I'm very much looking forward to Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar. Uh mm. Because I love yeah. Seth Rollins, I think Seth Rollins is. <laughs> Seth is doing good things. He's yeah, have you seen? Like he's got that training school. You see that? Yeah. Like that's yeah. he posts yeah. that all the time, man. That's pretty yeah. cool. I yeah. uh, at some point, if everything lines up, I would really like to go up there and uh, mm. and go up there to train. the school. Uh, oh yeah, to the black it, brave. It, that's a, it's a big time commitment and a big money commitment, but I would. Mm-hmm. Love to do it if everything lines yeah. up. If I can get everything right. to line up and uh, go down there, right? That'd be cool. That, yeah. that uh, would. Because uh, Seth, Seth is great. He's he's so good. Like I've I've thought he was the guy, quote unquote, since uh like 2015. You know, when yeah. He was when he was WWE champion. Uh, yeah. I thought that was phenomenal. Um, and ever since he, he I think he kind of had a rough little run there. When he at first uh, became a good guy, um, yeah. But I think he's really coming into his own, and like obviously the fans are behind him, and uh, he's torn it up with Brock before, so we know he can do it again. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So I'm really excited to see what they'll do on the big stage there. Um, and I'm also very excited to see AJ Styles, who I think is the best wrestler in the world today. Yeah. Uh, in Detroit, at least. He's um, phenomenal. Yeah. He's phenomenal. <laughs> he definitely is. Norton. Yeah. They were like, it's, it's, it's a cool story because, uh, you know, for the last, like, 10 years or 15 years, Randy Orton and AJ Styles were, like, the top guys in their respective companies, you know. Right. So it's awesome to see that TNA versus WWE thing again, like, it's cool, you know, because I, I grew up watching a little bit of TNA, too. I, I'm a WWE guy through and through. Yeah. That's what I grew up watching, you know. That's, like, that's the pinnacle for me, of course. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm also a big fan of any wrestling. Yeah. Um, I love WCW, um, although that was a little bit before my time. Now I have the network, and I get to go back and watch it. Um, and I grew up 
with TNA, and I got to see a lot of that. And I got to see guys like you know uh, AJ Styles, and I got to see everything Kurt Angle did there, and I got to see everything Sting did there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also think that Jeff Jarrett's best years were in TNA. Um, yeah, you also get yeah. to see. I mean, they they had a lot of talent. Like LAX is one of the best tag teams ever, in my opinion. So it was awesome to get to see them in TNA. Um, and Samoa Joe, him in TNA, always an honor. Uh, he'll have a good match with Rey Mysterio too, I think. Uh, yeah. So it, it'll be exciting to see. Oh yeah, yeah. So, it, I, it definitely is. It's definitely going to yeah, be, be. It'll be a good show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely. As, as it almost definitely always be. is. Um, it is it is like um, like the match is the card one one thing with the main event with the women's triple threat I I got a little bit upset on Smackdown this past Tuesday when Asuka and Charlotte when they wrestled and they gave they gave Charlotte the Smackdown women's championship I'm like what the hell is the creative oh, doing yeah. here? What? I I flipped. I flipped my shit. I did. He, I was like, he called me up that day. I was like, "What the hell? You do? What the hell?" <laughs> you know, I, I something was... I try to do is I try not to look too much into it. Like if something happens, I'm kind of like you know, boo or yay. Yeah. Um, and I just as a fan, I just kind of wait for it to play out. After it's played out, then I'll complain. Uh, but I just go along for the ride for the most part because I feel like that's the best way to enjoy wrestling. Right. So I'm hoping that Charlotte winning that SmackDown's Women's Championship pays off for something, and I hope maybe it pays off for something for Oscar. Or, you know. Yeah one we'll one of the things one of the things I I heard about and I was reading about and this does make sense now. I said okay, this makes a little bit sense. Okay. I I figured two things. I figured. With Charlotte going in as SmackDown Women's Champion, actually they should have just pulled her out of it because why does the SmackDown Women's Champion need to go after the Raw Women's Champion? Is she going to be a dual champion or are they going to unify the belts? Another thing is, what if they decide to make the match where if Becky or Charlotte or whoever pins whoever, like if Becky if Becky pins Charlotte, she wins the SmackDown Women's Championship. Yeah. She pins Ronda. She becomes a Raw Women's Champion. Okay, that's such a that's such a late '90s, early 2000s WCW stipulation. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. That just that, that gets me right there. That gets me right there. But uh, well, one thing, one thing for sure is uh, someone I'm, someone's gonna walk away. A champion. One one yeah. is going to go on one show. One's going to go to another, and one's going to go yeah. away for a while. Now, yeah. now I'm now. Could I jump into something else? Now I'm going to I'm jumping to another uh, you know Promotion. wrestling collection. Like all of us, you know, like what are your what are your thoughts on the AEW? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm and double or nothing coming up. Yeah, it's I'm double very or nothing. Excited for it. Um, because like obviously they have the money behind them that all the other companies haven't uh, that have tried to put up a, a fight to WWE, I suppose. Um, mm. So maybe it'll give people that are not a fan of the WWE style um, a big alternative on TV with superstars and stuff, you know. Um, but I'm I'm really excited for a It's going to be hot. Because of Cody. Yeah. Um, Cody is by far my favorite wrestler today. Like, um, doing it now. Like, I've loved Cody ever since he debuted. Um, I actually got the opportunity to see him when I was very young at an OVW show. Mm. Uh, he was a he was in a tag team with Ty Dillinger. Uh, he was going by Sean Spears back then, and they were the OVW tag team champions. So nice. I, I got to see Cody when he was very young. He uh he wore half. If I'm remembering correctly, he wore like half gold in tribute to Gold Dust trunks. And yeah. the other half was black and yellow polka dots. So huh. it was like I've seen him since he was dead. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm 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 just a big fan of the Rhodes family overall. Uh, but especially Cody. Like I love Cody. I've always loved Cody. Uh, I loved him in Legacy. I loved him as dashing Cody Rhodes. I loved him as undashing Cody Rhodes. Uh, <laughs> the white vest and white trunks Cody Rhodes, and then 
Rhodes Scholars, and then uh, up to now as uh, the American Nightmare, you know, like he's yeah. he's phenomenal, and I think he's one of the absolute very best wrestlers in the world today. I think he's phenomenal. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what he can do in his new position uh, and how his wrestling ideas translate to uh, promoting. Because I'm a big fan of him as a wrestler. So, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think of all the other talent, though? You know, there's a lot of good names oh, there. I mean, they've got great talent. Um, mm-hmm. Pentagon and Phoenix are phenomenal. Um, obviously, Kenny Omega is phenomenal. Uh, Chris Jericho is one of the absolute best of all time. Like you, yes. If you ask me to name people who are better than him, I would probably not be able to name very many. Um, so obviously he's a huge gift for them. Like he's phenomenal. He's still phenomenal. Uh, he'll probably always be phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, he's. I mean, he's just great. Um, yeah. He's alpha. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, and speaking um, of speaking of Jericho, if you don't mind me saying this, since we're talking about AEW, it was uh, revealed that the main event for the Double or Nothing will be Kenny Omega versus Chris Jericho. It was announced. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was It was announced. And well, if their first match is anything to go off of, uh, we're in for a treat because that was really yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what the reason why I know a lot of people got upset about this, which which kind of gets me, because their first match, like like you mentioned, they they did it over New Japan. A lot of people in the states did not get to see that. A lot of people who didn't really didn't really get to see that match, or if people did see it, they wanted more of it, and so bringing it to the state sides is great because that. Yeah, yeah. That that will just basically just put. I mean, like, like one name on the list, actually, uh, Chris. That I'm uh, I'm actually interested in meeting. You know, when I go to see him, actually, at yeah, best of the best CZW presents best of the best tournament. Uh, Sammy Guevara. Look at that from Triple A, like Triple A. You know, yeah, AWA. I've, I've seen him before. The very first match of his that I saw was uh, a match that he had with Cody. Um, he's good. Yeah. Yeah, he is. So I'm looking forward to actually saying hey and you know watching him perform. It's gonna be awesome. He's really good. Uh, something interesting about him, like you know, I, I really like to keep up with the indie scene because that's yeah. the part of the scene that I'm at. Um, and obviously, I would like to make it to the big time. Uh, so I kind of like watch the guys who have gone from the indie scene to the big times. Uh, and Sammy did in a very interesting way because he started off with a YouTube series. Yes, I know. It's still and going off. Still going. It's still going. You know, I'll, he's I'll probably be on it. Yeah. Yeah. So he started wrestling all the time, and <laughs> and uh, uh, now he's in AEW. So. I know. Yeah. yeah. The Check Double or Nothing pay per view is the events just looking great because. Right here, what they they have announced so far is they have a triple threat match with Britt Baker versus Kylie Ray and Nyla Rose. Yeah, Cody now, Rhodes. There's one, there's one top girl that's really come a long way in the in the you know female wrestler, uh, Kylie Ray from Chicago, I believe, and Freelance Underground, and a whole, whole couple other you know promotions she's worked. She's really out there. She's got a she's going to be a one to, uh, you know. I'm glad that yeah. she uh, can hang. I actually went down to Chicago and I actually saw her at a freelance uh, versus Game Changer Wrestling GCW, where Joey Janela, that, that's a, you know one of the hometown guys as well. You know that's on the, on the roster too of the AEW. But uh, yeah, to see her in the ring, it was cool. It's, you know, yeah, different set. Actually, she fought Joey Janela. That's great. Cody, yeah, like I've, I've been keeping an eye out on the AEW thing, so every time that I see that they've signed someone new, I go and I watch the matches of theirs, and you know mm-hmm. they they've not signed anyone who's not good. So. Right, right. Now, Cody, Cody hasn't ha- they haven't announced an opponent for him yet, though. But yeah, Adam Page versus Pac, aka yeah. used to be Neville. Yeah. 
that's going to be yeah, great. Yeah. That's the match is yeah. going to be like uh, we're gonna be, yeah. eyes are all going to be on that. I'm kidding. I'll wait for that one. I uh, I don't know a ton about Adam Page, admittedly, um, <laughs> but Neville Pac. I'm sorry, uh, Pac. Yeah, he's a phenomenal wrestler. Yes, uh, one of the very best in the world today. Um, I saw him wrestle once. I saw him wrestle once at Jersey All Pro. Phenomenal yeah. wrestler. Oh, yeah, I, I got I got to see him at a WWE live show. Mm-hmm. Um, I did too. I <laughs> that did man too. can do things that not a lot of people can do. <laughs> oh no no no! Yeah, he's and the man. Course, or, and of course, that, Kenny Omega. Yeah, yeah. He's the man he, that he gravity good. has forgot, which is mm. yeah. I mean, just the stuff that he can do is just amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and then. Yeah. They're going to have a bat over the budget battle royal, which mm-hmm. I think is going to be neat. And that's going to be. I'll awesome. be right back. Be right back. Go ahead, take over. Then right. okay, and then you have all you have Team All Elite Wrestling versus Team Oriental Entertainment Wrestling. SoCal Uncensor uh, versus uh, Seam uh, Chima and two partners to be announced. I mean, SoCal, Christopher Daniels, and Frankie Kazarian, and Scorpio Sky. Yeah. Yeah, those those are great. That's great. Uh, Christopher talent. Daniels is another guy that I learned of uh, in TNA. Um, he's phenomenal. He is. And so is Kaz. Uh, yeah. So, both, both I mean, they're not, those two guys aren't really in bad matches. So, <laughs> there's no reason to think that that one would be any different. Yeah. Um, so, I mean... The, Honestly, I only see great things in AEW's future. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm really excited for Double or Nothing. I I am too. I uh, I'm excited for this. I can't wait to see what what happens. And uh, it looks like Devin has said that uh, he'd like to put Kenny Omega right Omega right up there with AJ when it comes to in ring talent as well. Which yeah. I, I yeah. agree. No, I absolutely. Agree. Um, when I first saw Kenny Omega, um, I was like, I did that whole, oh, he's he's probably just one of those indie darlings or whatever, you know? Because, <laughs> but he's like, awesome. Like he's a he's a freak athlete, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and and his style of wrestling is not necessarily my style of wrestling, like the style of wrestling that I love to watch. Right, but like he right. does, he doesn't have bad matches. Like his matches with Okada are phenomenal. Obviously, the one with Jericho was great. Mm-hmm. Um, all of his matches with Cody were really good. Yeah, uh, I mean he's really good. And like, and here's the thing, like who am I to say that someone's not a good wrestler? Because like it's all in the eyes of the fans, you uh-huh. know. Like it is. and he connects with fans. Like fans love him. So, I mean he's obviously one of the most popular wrestlers in the world today, and therefore one of the very best. Right. Right. But he's also one of the best from a work rate perspective. <laughs> yeah, he, he <laughs> he's, he's great. Like, he is he's phenomenal. He he can he he's can really work. Good. He he yeah. definitely work. He definitely can. And yeah, there there's a lot of a lot of great stuff coming up with with WrestleMania in two weeks. AEW is double or nothing, and. We talked about some great stuff tonight with music. We we hit it all over from music to games to just a lot of things tonight. And um, be sure to tomorrow tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen, if you're in the area, please, please stop by. I'm going to pull it up here if I can find it here. Not that one. I have it on here because I pulled it up last night. <laughs> I'm trying to pull it up here on the okay. Here we go. All right, I hit the wrong thing. There we go. Tomorrow night, you'll be able to see Chris Sterling in the double ring battle royal at Double Danger. Kentucky's Own Wrestling presents Double Danger, the original double ring over the top. Battle Royal tomorrow night with on the poster there you see challenger Matty B will going up be going up against Chief Tomahawk for the KCW heavyweight title and that will be at the old shop build gym 
at 144 Shopville Road in Somerset, Kentucky. Ringside seats are ten dollars. Bleachers are five or eight, excuse me. Doors open up at seven p.m. Bell time is at seven thirty. So be sure if you're in the area, please stop by for Kentucky Zone Wrestling presents Double Danger. And before we close. Chris, where can people find Chris Sterling on social media at? Um, on Facebook, uh, it's just Chris Sterling. I'm the only Chris Sterling on Facebook whose profile picture is in a pair of underwear. 